Hello, everybody. Peace. Hello. Aloha, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. To a new week. Brand new week. A whole new. bunch of things going on, man. Very interesting. Uh huh. I think. Um, Uh, let, me, let me put up my my little yeah. share board. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Yeah, there you go, man. All right, all right. Well, aloha, Charlie. How are you, man? Long time no see. Yeah, well, you know, first we'd like to say hello and reading all the comments so far. Yeah, Hilo, we praying for you folks. I know that you're getting a, you're under deluge. Whenever you get to use that word too much, but you're under a flash. I guess it's a flash flood, but I know it was wet today. Island of Maui, Opakalua Dam, up country, uh, massive evacuation because of the breach of the dam up there. On Maui, so hope and pray everyone's safe. I uh, hope and pray the frontline workers, especially our rescue personnel, fire department, EMS personnel standing by that everyone keeps safe because we know that you all too have families that care about you. And if any place you want to be is be home right now, but you have dedicated yourself to this line of work. And we understand that you have uh, reshifted your priorities to respond to help helping those in need. So thank you. Thank you. I've been fine, brother Mel. I've been fine. It's been a, it's been an emotional roller coaster over there, put it there. <laughs> yeah, it has. And um, I know, I know it's still a little early waiting for everybody to jump on, but I also too wanted to uh, send our prayers out to Maui and the big island. And uh, it was excellent point commentary on our first responders because they don't have a choice. You know? Yeah. We all have a choice. You guys like wear masks, you don't like wear masks. You guys like travel, you don't like travel. You see, you guys have a choice. Uh, those frontline workers, law enforcement, uh, first responders, they don't have a choice. They, they need, they go into situations that most people will never see and they don't have a choice. So uh, prayers go out to all of them, all of you all in Maui. It wasn't, wasn't that long ago we had a, our, our uh, the breach of the Kaloko Dam, and uh, we lost many lives. It's nothing to mess around with. Um, and uh, so prayers go out to, to everybody really in the state right now. Um, I noticed it was interesting. They're, they're sending everybody to shelters, uh, community centers, and I think one, uh, one of the schools in Hana, on the Hana Highway, but, and I saw someone post, why don't you guys put them in hotels? where they can socially distance. And, you know, I, I mean, what an awesome thought. You can cram them in, in a, in, a, in a county that's struggling with COVID right now. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Put them in the hotels, the vacant hotels, rather than cram them together in a school or in a community center. So I just, again, you know, that that's not my idea. It came off of one of our viewers that I saw today. It was, uh, I thought it was brilliant. Brilliant. So anyway, hey, gang, yeah. talk about. Yeah, ahead, gang out there, if you we see one one viewer is having difficulty with sound, let me know. Let us know, please, if you can just uh, real fast put a comment that you hear us okay, you don't hear us. If someone said they're having no sound. So I just wanted to uh, kind of address that right now. I also want to tell, uh, send a shout out to uh, Gladys Spicer. She just commented that so far everyone's safe, but they're keeping a watch. Yes. Thank you, Gladys. It's uh, the years that I have worked at the department. It was when uh, Hana Highway and Derry Road was lower than what it is today because that road had been backfilled with uh, asphalt and I think it was raised almost 11 feet because it used to be a big dip in that area. And I remember as a rookie boy, people get their car stuck. We would have to go in there, 
in our rain gear and actually put them on our backs and walk them out, it was it was deep. It was exceptionally deep. So just gotta be safe. It's gotta be yeah. safe, everybody. Yeah. Gotta be safe. Yeah, you know, I, I I see everybody responding that the sound is good. Uh for some reason, Charlie, you're uh you're loud tonight. Um, and I, I mean, in a good way, in a good way. Um, so I'm not sure if my, I don't know if my laptop is, because uh, no, you I, I struggle, but tonight it's super loud, loud, super clear. So yeah, you, you're coming in loud and clear. Man. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I All can right. start. You know, I, I honestly don't even know where to start today, Charlie. You know, um, I think I think we should start with the uh the south african variant uh, we should probably start there because it's probably the top news of the day although some <laughs> some people are downplaying it uh it, it kills me when i read comments on facebook and uh, today i was busy so i didn't get a chance to look to be on facebook too much but i came across one guy who basically said hey guys they just changed the name it's still the flu they're doing this to control you guys. I mean, like, wow. <laughs> I don't know how people can downplay this when, uh, remember, Charlie, we've been talking about this for a while. Everyone else is telling us be careful um, for this variant. And uh, so now it's, it's made its way to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Of course, they say it's community spread, of course, because you, you cannot, you just don't know how to contact trace. That's why, that, that's why. So tonight's news, they said, oh, they're doing contact tracing in his or uh, their workplace. Um, interestingly enough, when they spoke to um, Dr. Kimball, Kimball, uh, it kind of leaked out that it came from Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was she was shut down, you know. It, it, why not just tell us? Why can't they just tell us? Jesus Christ, you know, anyway. Bottom line is this, the variant is here, the, the, the one that we were worried about, but then again, we knew it was gonna make it here anyway. The question is, how widespread is it? Because remember, it takes a while and they're randomly taking samples, right? From all the different tests. How, how many other cases are there that were counted at one time as a positive? Right, and then we still haven't determined if it's a variant or not. So that's that's the two questions I have. Number one is, how widespread is it, and when will we find out uh, how widespread is it? That that's my two questions. Well, if you if you saw my post today, you you, you know that most of my posts are being very sarcastic throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I was just being sarcastic because I understand that Dr. Kimball, and uh, I'll give credit to her, she is asking that everyone be on the lookout for the variant. Well, I would be on the lookout if you just tell us where it's at, but you guys keeping it such a secret, I don't know where it's at. So I don't know how we can keep a lookout. So it's, it's almost like saying, Okay, gang, there's an all points bulletin. And that's all you tell us. You don't tell us what we're looking for, a car, a person. You know, you don't tell us what we're looking for. So I said, okay, uh, are you gonna let us know pretty soon or uh, are we just gonna stumble across it? So that's one of the problems that we face. Well, second, I did, I did yeah. my duty today. Mm -hmm. I walk all over Wailoa House lots. And you never see them? I never see them. Yeah. I asked everybody I came in contact with, including the dogs and the cats, yeah. and they never see them either. So I'm telling everybody, just be on the lookout. What are we looking for? The variant, <laughs> the variant, the South African variant. Oh, just be on the lookout. We gotta be on the lookout. You know, we could do a comedy routine on this thing, but it's so serious. And, and that's what I don't get, you know, I don't get it, it, it's, it is because everyone else, all of the areas that have been hit with the South African variant, all of the states started with one case, remember? Everybody starts with that one case. 
oh, we got the South African variant. Now, I don't know <clears throat> if the, the, the governors or the health directors in those other states just make an announcement and said, hey, guys, we got to be on the lookout for the South African variant. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, whatever they did, I mean, this variant, this, this South African variant is quite contagious. Mm -hmm. And as I heard the, the state health guy, the, whatever, the lab guy say that it, the, it's quite resistant to, to the vaccine. So anyway, bottom line is this, it's here. It's definitely going to spread because it's that's what it does. We still have other variants here as well, but this one is the, the most uh, concerning because of the, the resistance to the vaccine. But yet not one mention of any concern of opening up. No, no, everything else is on track, on course. And yet we, we now know, we, we knew, all of us on this show and all of the experts that we listened to all knew that it was just a matter of time. But interestingly, not one peep about where do we go from here as far as a community, as far as a government, as far as a, a county or a, a state, as all I can hear is, is nothing changes. We just keep going as planned to open up, to open up. Mm -hmm. And that's quite frightening for, you know, just my own opinion, that's frightening. It, it is, it, it, it's kind of like um, taking a very dangerous risk. Uh, that's, that's the best way I can put it. It's, it's, it's very risky, yeah. very risky. Well, I, I you know, I'm, I'm still confused about how they assign these. I know there's a numerical name for each variant, right? Why do they call it the South African variant? Did it because it first popped up in South Africa or, you know, I, I, that I, I don't know, but there, there must be a, a, a logic to it. Uh, I, got a, I got a message from a, a viewer from Honolulu. They, so he spotted two Brazilian variants, which is, and so I asked him, I said, what did it look like? He says, all I know, it, it wore bikini and was Brazilian type bikini. So that gotta be one Brazilian variant. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me that that started my day to just, I was putting up little Johnny jokes. I was just telling jokes all day because, you know, what can you do? Like I said, the best thing is, uh, we can we can be safe we can use safety as much as possible but you cannot let some of the decision making that's going on now get to you because you will go bonkers <laughs> i swear and so um you know they talked about the state lab i don't know if you saw my post about the my lab that i posted that you were discussing i saw the picture, saw the picture yeah yeah. yeah, because they was wondering, where did this variant come from? If it wasn't travel-related, then where did it come from? And I said, it came from my good friend, Frankie Stein. You, you heard of Frankie Stein? Yeah, dude, right, I tell you. Popular guy. <laughs> that's where the variant came from. So that's how my day has been. I mean, that's all you can do, brother. That's yeah, I you know, we, I think we, and when I say we, um, I, I'm really talking about all of us here on this show, all of us around the state, around the country, that has been um, sounding the horns, the alarms. I've been reading some uh, some posts from people that I believe are pointed to us, Charlie. Um, and that's fine. You know, we, we're big guys. We're we, you know, we've been through worse. I guess is what I should say is what I'm trying to say. But you know, whatever. Um, I'm not. I'm not changing course. Um, I still believe what I believe. I still believe that it's a mistake to uh, the safe travels program is a mistake. I still believe. I've I've never wavered. I, I've you know we've openly supported our mayor, and I still support our mayor as he's acting uh, with the in information that he's getting from the experts that he's working with. But I never, and I will never. Uh, support the notion that one test is sufficient yeah. and unfortunately we're going to have to ride this out 
and hope for the best. But like you said, Charlie, regardless of what leaders do, decision makers do, at the end of the day, it's still our choice what we want to do. I saw a picture today. I'm not going to mention any names. Good friend of mine, very good friend of mine, UH Hilo, the Booster Club, party, a ton of guys, no masks, no social distancing, posted on Facebook. Uh, very disappointing. Very disappointing to see someone that you know and you really, you really I love this guy like a brother. And, um, but that for me, what that tells me is that the Lieutenant Governor has, has is successful. He's, he, he has become successful in his mission to minimize the threat of COVID. Mm. He, he's, he's, he's successful. His daily comments about, we got this thing, that you got your vaccine, you're good. You know, it, it worked for him. So now you have people like my friend and that, that entire booster club at UH Hilo, which are made up of a lot of professional people partying in a look what looked like some kind of I'm not sure some kind of restaurant or some indoor facility party big party unbelievable but we're going to see more of that we're going to see more of that because I think people are letting their guard down even if the variant has reached our shores the South African variant you would think that people would kind of be more concerned, but again, the message hasn't changed from the state. So what do you do? All we can do is do our part. All we can do is make sure we, I, I mean, I sound like a broken record, but that's what it is. Um, well, it let's, is. let's go, uh, let's, let's take another look at uh, something else to this. That's rather disturbing. But I, I want to put it in a context where I just want to inform you folks, and I just and it's not to um, get you upset, but I just I just want to inform you folks that um, I had more than one source over the last I would say last maybe since Thursday last week Thursday okay. I've had about three sources, and they have assured me. And I asked him, how can you be assured? How can you assure me of what you're telling me? It's because, just know this, the numbers that are reported are being skewed so that the end result stays within a lower uh, ideal number for a seven day average, if you know what I mean. That's all it was told to me. So I said, okay, so let me ask you this. So if I was to take 100, the number 100, and broke it up five times, that means it's 20, it's 20 per, per time, right? He goes, you're catching on. Yes. So I said, are you telling me that they're fudging the numbers? He said, I'm not saying that. All I say is be watchful because you're gonna see numbers that don't make sense. And what they're, what they're advising me of is the numbers that is being reported on testing days and how it's being released. And I said, oh boy. So in reality, uh, what's reported, is there more? Can you tell me that if there's more? And the answer was definitely more. And that's all we're gonna say. That's all I'm, this person said, that's all I'm gonna say. And I said, well, thank you. And I said, you know, I'm gonna say something about it, but I'm not gonna, I don't give away my sources. I'm just gonna relate to everyone, the conversation I had. And I always knew something was up. It, it had that feeling. And you know, as an investigator, and you know this very well now, that when you come down this road before, you know certain traits, right? You, you see certain traits, you know certain things are developing, you know straight, right off the bat, something is not right. And that's, that's, how, that's, you know, that's how you investigate. That's just how it's done. And every investigator I know, they'll tell you the same thing. It's a hit and miss. You don't try to force something on paper because 
if you do and it's wrong and you perjure yourself, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. You just let the facts come out. So, yeah. So that what was told down. Oh. Yeah, we. I just got a text from someone in the industry, in the field, in the medical field that uh, validated what you just said. Um, right now, as you were talking, someone just texted me <clears throat> that is very uh, aware of, of what's going on and is a trusted source as well. So I have absolutely no doubt, Charlie. You know, I've I stopped posting the numbers on my page. I used to do it every day. I post the Kauai numbers when they come out. Whenever Kauai gets a case, I post it, but I have stopped posting the Hulu number or the statewide numbers for quite a while because of that very reason is I don't trust it. I think it's, I don't think it's right. Uh, mm -hmm. On the information we have from sources that, I mean, it's just not accurate, plain and simple. It's not accurate. And uh, obviously they, they don't, they won't allow anyone in to go look at the, the numbers. Uh, so we got to rely on what they give us. So, you know, consider the source and take it for what it's worth. But that's why I don't post the numbers every day. I don't, because I don't want you guys to be misled by numbers that I don't trust myself. And, and that's why I stopped doing it. And it's sad. You remember uh, months ago, months and months ago, when, when the state came out, it was a lieutenant governor, changed the way they were going to report. And in our active cases, they only go back 14 days. They're only counting the active cases within the last 14 days. So we know that these cases stay active in, in many cases for longer than 14 days. So even the active number of cases, uh, and, and how does the state know? Because they don't do a second test to get you out of the active, right? You, you, once you get positive, they send you home, they tell you quarantine, and when you power your quarantine or so many days after your symptoms or then you can go back to work. Do I have to take a test? No, no, no. So the, the number of active cases is not even accurate because they're only counting in a 14 day window. Um, and I, I thought that was a mistake when they started doing that. It was months ago. It was, it was late last year, or maybe even middle of last year. But it was to keep the numbers down. It was to keep the numbers statewide of active cases down. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. But at the end of the day, you want to control the numbers, you know, they can. They, they, they have less testing. They manipulate the data. They control what numbers get released and with what point. The, you know, what the, the ultimate goal right now is to get Honolulu to tier four. They want to get Honolulu below 20 cases and they're going to get it done. And there's not a damn thing you or me or any of us watching this is going to do about it. So understand the source. In the military, you know, we call it limiting factors, limb facts. Limb facts. When you go into a zone, there's certain factors that you have you cannot control. And, and it could be whatever. It could be water. It, it could be weather, it, whatever. In, in, in this case, when we make our decisions as as lay people, the limiting factor for us is inaccurate information, uh, minimization of the threat of this virus. Those are limiting factors that we got to work with. As long as you understand that, then you can make a, a good decision, an, an educated decision, because you know you cannot base it all on the numbers that they're giving you because it's not accurate. So you better have other uh, supporting proof or uh, information that can can help you make your decision. And, and that is what bothers me the most because the state is who we should be relying on. We should not have to question the information that comes from the Department of Health or from the Lieutenant Governor or from the governor. That, that shouldn't be a limiting factor at all, but it is. Mm -hmm. It's sad, so sad. Well, I, I wanted to address something by our good friend, Ed Fourier. And uh, no, I, I understand it. Um, but the individuals are not in that position. They're not the ones in the position to, um, how should I say, come before a camera and release that info or put an official document on paper and put it in a press release. I, I'm, I'm sure there are individuals above them, above their pay grade that does that. But it seems like 
everything for some reason, and I, I don't know what it is. All I can say is the numbers are not, how can I say it? It's not really accurate. So, you know, it, it's, it just, it's just one of those things, but I understand what you're saying. It, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's on everybody's conscience. But I think these individuals wanted, and you know, same like with Mel's stories, they wanted us to know knowing that we would say something, but we have to be very, very delicate on how we say it. And that's why I just, I opened up by saying that, you know, I hope, I'm not saying it to get anyone angry. It's just that I've always had this gut feeling because I followed numbers just like all of you out there. We follow the numbers. And then all of a sudden, the numbers start to take a different turn just by the mere mention of vaccine, just by the mere mention of tears, you know what I mean? Tear levels. Nothing was actually done. It's just the mere mentioning that the vaccines are here and we're going to tier three. Miraculously, all the numbers start to go lower. And it's never happened before. It's never happened before. There was nothing out there that will constitute any kind of drag that will cause any kind of drastic change like what we've seen. Nothing. Because if there was something that was very, very, um, how should I put it? Very uh, noteworthy. Don't you think they would have done that to the senior home when all those poor veterans passed away? Don't you think that it could have been rapidly deployed at that time to prevent that, uh, those amount of uh, unfortunate situation. I, I think, it, you know, so that's why it's very, it's very, very uh, complicated. And uh, that's, that's really all, you know, we can hope and pray for and that, you know, people that have a conscience that's in higher places. Uh, but, you know, gang, uh, when, when it's all said and done at the end of the day, we, 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 we know what we have to do for ourselves to protect ourselves and our loved ones, okay? We still have um, in, information and, and I, I made a comment. I said, you know, I think we wouldn't have any of these problems if we just report like what Mel and I have been doing and we just stating the report straight from when we brought on all those different guests we just reiterated what they said. We didn't add, we didn't do nothing else. But yeah, there's people on the other side of the fence that took that and started to skew it. So once they start doing that, there are, there are individuals who are very vulnerable. And then they start questioning, hey, who, do we, who do we believe? Who do we believe? Who do we trust? And all I could say was, hey, Never let I ne I've never led you down a dark hole before, and I ain't gonna start now. And this individual that's releasing that kind of information, they haven't surfaced before, and all of a sudden they surface. I think that's that's how I would check. I would check my uh, sources out that way. Who's been who's been doing it longer? It's been us. But again, we've always said we get the information. If it doesn't work for you, scrap it and move on and wait for the next bit of information to come out. And if that works for you, then fine. That's all, that's all we've, we've targeted, David. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we, we, we're not trying to convince anybody one way or the other. Like you said, Charlie, we, we're just relaying the information. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I hear, I, I hear a lot of information every day. Some I uh, discount because I know it's false. Uh, mm -hmm. Some goes into a, the other pot that requires further study, and some that I take is based on um, the person that is telling me the information and their, you know, their ability to get that kind of information. So, yeah, absolutely, man. If if what we're saying is not in agreement, that's perfectly fine. That's what this whole show is about: is to get everyone engaged, engaged. As long as we stay civilized and not personal, you know, we're free to dispute anything we say right here in the comments that's perfectly fine but mm. i think every bit of every bit of information that you receive has to be has, has to go your own process 
mm -hmm. of integrity and figure out you know who who can you believe and you know Charlie and I we're not smart enough to create the the stuff that we talk about we we just not we we learn our stuff from the experts that are smart enough mm -hmm. so yeah please share uh, if 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 you guys think that uh, we're off base please put it in the comments so we can we need to be checked as well like everyone else we need to be checked like everyone else so um, i i can tell you that i can cite the source uh of any of the scientific information that we've put out here we can cite the source uh, the person that that made it made that statement or made that claim we all have opinions and we obviously share our opinions one we're going to be sharing real quick and it's not going to be pretty but as far as the science I, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we have asked, and not only us, because I've seen the question asked on the on the interviews with the Lieutenant Governor to cite the source, cite the science um, that he believes after your second vaccine and 14 days, you, you have uh, total immunity. Cite, and he's never done it. He's never done it. Um, I can cite you all the sources that said that's not true including CDC, including the, the, all the doctors. So it is really comes down to who you, who you trust, who you have faith in, and that's where it comes down to. Uh, my source that just texted me, I can honestly tell you right now, I would take that to the bank. I'm never going to expose who that is, but I can tell you I would take that to the bank. That's how much I trust that person. So anyway. Ah, the other thing, and we're going, we're going, we will talk about the KI TV article about our mayor um, wanting to go inner island quarantine free uh, on April 1st, but the, the, the one thing that is bugging my butt, Charlie, is that hotel that had a luau indoors, 150 people, tourists, of course, because if it was locals, they would have all been arrested. 150 tourists having a luau indoors because the weather was bad outside. And it's like uh, the mayor in Honolulu says, uh, I got to go discuss this with the Department of Health. Why it, didn't someone get arrested? 150, that's a super spreader event. Indoors, no ventilation. I saw, the, I saw the video. These guys were all sitting close to each other. But, but oh, you know, so what, right? You, you, you can't even have one wedding. You cannot have a funeral. You cannot have a baptism you can't have a birthday here uh you cannot 10 people but it's okay all the tourists took a covid test <laughs> i think you're being sarcastic i hope you're being sarcastic marshall <laughs> i don't give a rat's ass if they took the vaccine i really don't my point is this this is, this is what bugs me. We as locals, whether you take a vaccine or not, cannot gather with more than 10 people. The local people, the people that live here cannot. No, taboo, you're gonna get arrested. You're gonna take it. But 150 guests, that's not including the staff. That's not including the staff. I'm just talking about the guests, 150 visitors. And, and, and nothing, just, oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, we, I'll go talk to the Department of Health about it. Well, no, 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 no. Pretend if there was 150 locals that's in somebody's big garage or somebody's big house. It, just pretend was local people would be different. Would be different, would be, would be all over Facebook, would be, would be all over, it, it would be, they would just crap on that family's 
See, we don't do that. I am some do, but most of us follow the rules. But what pisses me off is that the hotel never had a second thought about it. They didn't think about all the people, not the guests, but the employees that's got to serve these people. All the staffers that's got to go clean up afterwards. A luau, not a funeral, not a birthday. I, I, that, I don't know how you feel, Charlie, but that pisses me off. That, that totally okay. pisses me off because it, it, from day one, it's always been visitor first, local residents last, always, always. And what I did today was, um, again, I, I, I made a sarcastic remark, a post that you may have saw that maybe you want to hold a wedding, go book a luau, and then Jiro Chenji have a wedding. Yeah. I, I mean, wh where's the $5,000 uh, 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 a violation tickets? So every everyone that allowed that to happen, everyone that allowed that to happen, to happen that that knew the, the, the I'm talking about the hotel people and the hotel itself should be fined five grand, five grand. That that's how that's how I feel about it because that's that's in your face, in your face. Sorry, these are visitors, people. They, they're not local people. They flew all the way over here. They spent all their money. They took a test. We cannot tell them no because the weather bad. We cannot have the law outside. So we'll just bring them inside and violate the law. But that's okay because they're tourists. We don't want to. We don't want to ruin their vacation experience because they might go on on uh, the the social media and yep. tell everybody how bad. So no, we got to make sure that they're happy. We got to make sure that they're that we don't ruin their vacation. The locals, screw the locals, they live here. But the tourists, we cannot, hell no, we cannot, we cannot offend the tourists. That, that's how I see that. And, and you can, you can, I don't care what you think, really, because that's how I feel. That was an opinion I was telling you about a little while ago. That is not based on science. That, that's just violating the law. And then basically saying, because we had bad weather. We, we have to, or else we'd have to cancel. We'd have to cancel the luau. Oh. Woo! Cancel the luau, jackass. It's against the law. Anyway, sorry for the cussing. It just burns me up, man. That, that to me is so disrespectful for the Hilton Hawaiian Village to even do that. Th that hotel is a bubble, Jill. I understand it's a bubble, but the rules still apply. Social distancing still applies. I, I, I'm just telling you that that's that's a horrific and, and to me it isn't even about the law. It's about local people cannot, and the visitors can. That's no. the, that's to me the, that's the biggest dis, dis, disparity. Not about what they were doing in the room. I don't care. The bottom line is they are allowed to do it without any fear of penalties, but the locals cannot. That, that's all I'm suggesting. And it's wrong. It, it's, it's wrong. You, you know, who, who has a, a lot of, you can call it a blame to carry on the shoulder. It is actually the, um, the producer of that segment of that, of that, of that uh, event. Uh, from the news, the news organization covering the story. You know, they were looking for a newsworthy uh, story because it is like the first day back getting, and again, it, 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 it highlighted tourism. I think maybe someone should have first said that, you know, I hope you all understand that once we air this, there's this image that we will be casting and that is we are not following the rules that many of the residents on who has to follow according to tier three. And I don't think anyone even came close to suggesting that. So they just ran the story. And the story is what it is and it came out the way it came out. 
And it's kind of too late to retract. I mean, the cat's out of the bag, right? So it's an odd uh, moment that they should have said, you know, we're going to be talking about all you folks, uh, all the guests having an experience. But we need to know now, how is it going to be viewed on the other side of the lens? When we show this, how will some people, some people will be elated. There's no doubt about it. They see that there's some normalcy coming back, right? And then, as you mentioned, people that have, they had to forego funerals of a loved one, someone that had to alter the plans of a once in a lifetime event, such as getting married, can possibly view that and say, wait a minute, where, where's the equity in all of this? Is, is it something that, what, is it because at my wedding, I refuse to serve blue Hawaii's and Mai Tai's? That's the reason why I can't do what they did, right? Because those are the kind of things that really comes to the forefront that I think needs to be addressed. And, and if it's not addressed, then basically it got swept under the carpet. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, like I said, the mayor said he was gonna address the issue. Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they just, they, the management made a, a decision. When the weather was too bad, they made a decision. They know the rules. They, the hotel knows the rules. Yeah. Very simple. And they made the call um, to put it inside, knowing that it would have, I mean, seriously violate the rule. Seriously. But mm -hmm. they made that decision. And um, when they made that decision, they basically disrespected every single local resident that lives in the state. Every single resident that, like you said, Charlie, has been uh, prohibited from doing our cultural things, you know, um, because of the the laws, because of the social distancing rules, because of the the indoor outdoor capacity rules. Those things have been around forever. Honolulu's been there forever. They and and if they don't know, then they're lying. Right. And if they think that because they're a Hilton Hawaiian village, I mean, I never stayed there. Of course not. I can't afford the Hilton Hawaiian village, but I can tell you, I never will. I will never stay there. Uh, but when they made that decision, it was a decision that they thought uh, it was it was okay. I disagree. You know, you cannot put our kids there in schools because. You cannot put too many kids in one classroom, but you can fill up one ballroom with 150 people. And, and if you saw the video, you saw, if you saw the pictures, you saw, they were not six feet apart. They were not six feet apart. So we'll see what comes out of that. I'm sure nothing, but uh, for all of you guys on Oahu, uh, you know. Let, let me ask you something, not to change the subject. Um, I mean, we can, we can do a whole show on this called um, Equality During COVID, or something of that nature. You know, we, we can do a show like that. We can show, okay, it's good for this. You remember, I always used to use the, the, the old saying, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? And after a while, it was like, okay, there goes Uncle Charlie again. No, but it, it, really, it really holds true to something like this. What's good for one, why not it be good for the other? Okay, it, it, it always comes back to that. But I wanted to ask you, you know, with those two detected variants that we uh, supposedly had that was, uh, that is not travel related or travel related or however it's being classified. And my sarcasm today said, well, if it's not community spread, and if it's not travel related, then it must be, it must have been a stowaway, or it's Amazon related because it came here somehow. And if it came faster than others, then it probably is Amazon Prime. That's the way it came here. But <laughs> but I've got to really hone in on the fact that these two were um, the individuals, right? First, it started off with the husband. Okay. 
And that's and that's that's a, a whole nother that's a whole nother incident on a big island. But but it can apply to variants as well. And and you and, and I'm sure you heard of the, the big island story where they had a test, but they didn't know about the big island rules, but they had a uh, negative test. They came to the big island, lo and behold, the husband tested positive. He did a second mandatory test to, to eliminate any false positives or false negatives, and he tested positive again. So now they got a quarantine. So my question is this, with the same type of application, if there is these variants, and the way I read the report, it says that uh, it did spread to the family. So that means that, oh boy, it was highly transmissible because it's it spread pretty rapidly. And they believe, you know, they contained it or whatever the case may be. One, how was it detected, right? And two, if we're doing away with a detection system, are we to assume that the only way we will detect trouble over the horizon, on the horizon, is when someone gets sick? So say for instance, we detect trouble on the horizon, a person gets tested and they test positive. My question is, how many people did this person come in contact with and what if you have a whole slew of individuals get sick, pop up at the same time? That is my fear. If we do away with a, because if Australia wasn't worried about great white sharks, in a lot of their resorts, you notice they got that big, uh, flotation nets out there, right? Mm -hmm. It's there not to say, it's not it's, it's not put there so people know that they, they're getting into the deep end of the pool and, and if you can't swim, don't go that far out. It's not for that reason at all. It's for these big things, bigger than life, that can uh, make life hell for you in a real short period of time. That's what it's there for. So just imagine and of course, you got saltwater crocodiles in Australia, right? So just imagine, you take away that that floating that floating security fence. You say no need, because we, beyond a reasonable doubt, we believe that all precautionaries have taken, and the attacks are very far and few. So don't worry. How the hell you know that's true? If you really don't have anything to stop. I mean, I would think that you leave it up, something get tangled in the in the in the net, then you know that a hey, an attack would have occurred, right? If never have the net. But because we got them, it's stuck in a net, we prevented one attack. And that's what I'm saying about this whole getting rid of the detection. Okay, I understand it costs, I understand it's a headache. If we don't catch anybody, good. Everybody's safe. If we catch somebody, at least we're preventing more people from getting sick. Or are we saying, that's not true, Charlie, because vaccine, vaccine and all of this, nobody's supposed to get sick, okay? I wanna see what a study is right now. I, I just saw Dana just posted, um, well, it was 15 minutes ago. I missed it on the original run. I saw a reply. It says, hot off the press, Maui's airport, Airport departure testing study is ready to share. We'll forward it to you, Mel and Charlie. And UH has a study that brings up the travel related spread. Yeah, I'd love to see that study. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Dana. Thank There's you, also yeah. another post that mentioned the superintendent, the DOE superintendent mentioned that they're not going to enforce uh, social distancing when they report to uh, in person school in the, in the next quarter in the fourth quarter. I did not see that. Someone just posted that. So I'd be curious to see, in fact, if that's their plan uh, to not, not enforce social distancing. That would be, a, again, a mistake. You know, there, there's, there's ways to coexist with this virus. And we got to figure that out. I mean, it's going to have to. We cannot stay closed forever. But uh, social distancing is probably one of the, and a mask, is probably two of the most important 
hearts and you cannot piecemeal this thing. You cannot pick and choose. You know, you gotta, you gotta follow all the rules. Yeah. You gotta have social distancing. Anyway, I, I, be, I gotta go try to see if I can find that superintendent. It'll be very interesting to see. Um, I, I'm sure the Department of Education is prepared to have statements made that should something go haywire, right? They'll have something hot off the press right then and there. Something to the effect, all oh, precautionary measures were taken. This is an isolated situation. Blah, 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 blah. That's, that's, that's what's gonna come up. It's gonna be the same old rhetoric. And unfortunately, those parents who feel isolated that you know they've been beating the drums and nobody's been listening, in this case, they're gonna be right. But at the same token, this, their, their loved one, their child is gonna be infected. Then there's just a whole slew of things that it's, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be an avalanche effect from that point on. Right? Yeah. I, I will, um, I will say that I hope, and there's selfish reasons as well. I want my kids to come home. I want my, my kids to come home safely. I want my kids to come home and be able to enjoy Kauai. They've been away for too long. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's my selfish reason. I, I want this thing to go away. I want this thing to, to get safe. I want to be safe. It's just that the, the science um, says that we got to be very careful. And, and that I guess that's all we can do is be careful. And, and if we're, we protect our, if we do what we're supposed to do, then everybody will be safe. And, and that's, that's how simple the solution is. If everybody does what they're supposed to do, if they all wear their masks, they all social distance, they all disinfect their hands, they all avoid gatherings, then no one will get sick. You know, I, everybody does it. I'm putting out a request to anybody who works at, they, they can message me anonymously on Messenger. But if you are a um, physician or nursing staff or or you work at any of the major hospitals on Oahu. You know, there, there has been talk that there's been some long-term employees that just had enough. And there's sort of like this mass exodus that, that is taking place. And I just wanna find out if that's true or not. Okay, because if it is true, then we, we are in for a world of hurt. It's, it's bad enough we have shortages in critical care nursing. And if those people who are in those areas just are burnt out and just had enough, um, what do we do? You, you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot take a, a nurse on a pediatric ward and expect them to take care of a critical care patient. It just don't work that way. So if there is anyone up to the challenge that would like to message me and say, yes, I mean, um, I'm not gonna, Share your name. I'm just. I just want to have a discussion with you because I was told that I haven't seen anything. I'm pretty sure that if the major news agencies out there, they probably have someone pounding the beat trying to get that information as well. But uh, that is just something that I heard, and I just want to confirm if it's true or not. That's it. And if it's not true, then by the individuals I talked to, then the issue dies right then and there. There's no use beating a dead horse over this thing. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to post your comments. Um, you know, I and I, uh, I'll read them if, if it relates. Um, I, I want to hear from parents. Uh, Tyson just posted, I have no issues or concerns with my daughter attending school full time face to face during fourth quarter, especially since all teachers at our school have been fully vaccinated. And here on Kauai, majority of all teachers have. See, that's 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 uh, that's what we want to hear. Want to hear from all of you guys, all your positions, um, just like that, professional like that, and 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 we can have the the engagement. Um, all the other 
how the other uh, parents feel. I, I think for me, I, I don't know. I think a lot of parents that I come in contact with are ready for their kids to go back to school. I believe that mm -hmm. the kids need to go back to school. I also believe that it needs to be safe for the kids and the teachers. And, and even with the vaccines, uh, the CDC still recommends you gotta, you, you gotta still be safe. You still gotta be safe and you gotta be smart, so. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Lynn says, thank you for speaking up for social distancing because that, that and masking are set as a priority for schools. Don't know why superintendent and Campbell are saying they can choose not to enforce. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, I'd like to hear from you folks, especially you parents. Well, what are, what are your feeling on this, knowing that your teachers are, are vaccinated I'm assuming most of them are. I, I, I don't know if all of them are, but I'd be curious to, to hear. You know, what's interesting is the private schools are still is, are going. We have had zero cases in private schools. That's, that's based on practicing safe measures at, the, at school. Um, they, were, they were in school way before vaccines, way before vaccines. So I'm curious if you guys, you know, go ahead and post it in there so we can we can share it because that's mm -hmm. what this is all about. My child, my child attends St. Catherine's. I feel safe as they have strict safety protocol in action. Everyone washing masks. Yeah, yeah. when I saw, I had to drive past uh, St. Catherine's one day going up to Kapahi and I saw the kids in the, in the field and they were like masked up, all spread apart. And uh, went up, I did my business up in Kapahi on the way down. They were, they were now sitting down in the field, but they were all separated more than six feet apart. And they were having, it looks like they were having some kind of outdoor discussion, uh, but they all had their masks on. So it can be done. It can be done. P private school has, has shown that um, for quite a while now. So yeah, kids belong in school. And uh, I just question the mask thing. I, I really question the fact that they're not gonna, or social distancing. I think that is critical. But then again, that's just based on what I'm hearing from the science. So we will find out, we will find out. I just got this from uh, a viewer. The Chief's Luau at uh, Whitman Wild Park, Kapolei is back on. The witch? Trophy. The Luau, you know the wet and wild park? Oh, yeah. They have a yeah. Luau there. Yeah, so it's back on. Wow. Yeah. But it's outdoors. And, um, that, that one is outdoors, right? Yeah. So, and uh, I think the PCC one is indoors, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, you know, no one should be having, you know, your island's limit, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, you cannot have more than that in a in a gathering. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll see the outcome I, again. You know, I hope no one gets sick. I hope, especially our employees, don't get sick. Uh, again, these guys don't have a choice. That's their job. They got to go to work. Yeah. You, you put them in a situation that could be dangerous for them. That that's that's wrong, man. That's just wrong. Um, so why why test it? <laughs> I, why test it? Just follow the damn rules and we'll get through this. But some people, some people want to test it. You know, they, they don't, again, it, I think, I swear it goes back to inconveniencing the visitors. We've heard that, that theme from the beginning. We've heard that theme from day one. You know, we've heard it from every, every single leader in the state said the same thing. You know, we don't want to inconvenience. We cannot send out the wrong message to the, the visitors that, that Hawaii is not open. We pay the price, you know. Well, you know, it's um, it's 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 just a tough call, and and they gotta do what they gotta do. But um, I I did want to say some of you may have saw the post today. I was being again, um, and I I put I put sort of like a comical spin on it, but you know we have a lot of tours and um. At, at Port Allen because we have the Nepali uh, boat cruises go out from Port Allen. And I gotta say that operation is A plus. 
I mean, it was a large group of people, but they was pretty much spread apart because the time it took for them to pass my post was quite a while. Every single one of them had a mass coming, and when they got off the boat, going back to their cars, they got to walk back up towards the complex. And that's why I put, I was very impressed. But <laughs> what taught me is, I wonder what were they told? And that's why I put that little comical spin, like aloha, welcome to X, Y, Z, Nepali, boat tours and cruises. Uh, we have several safety measures that we must adhere to. One, as you're walking down to the boat, you must have your mask on. Failure to do so, our staff is certified and trained in pushing you off the pier, okay? So if you understand that and you agree with that, then fine, now let's go ahead and have fun. That's what I put in Facebook. That part, I just added it on because I just wanted to know, to give kudos to that company. And I don't know which one it is. All I know is there's a lot of people, they were distanced. But what I was impressed about was even the little ones, you know, the small kids, they weren't over there arguing, daddy, daddy, whining. They're not like, well, math, blah, 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 blah. They wore their mask and I was impressed. So, you know, I am gonna call it out and give credit where credit is due because, I mean, that company did a bang up job. You know, they had one uh, tour guide in the middle, one in the back, one off to the side. So making sure that, you know, cars, because they're walking down the road, right? And they kept them really in check. And I was just, you know, if I had to use that as a poster of what to do when vacationing in Hawaii, that would have been it. Because you could probably try to figure out just by doing some type of photogrammetry using the photo. And you could measure thinking, well, they look closer than they weren't. They were at, because how I know, because it took them time to pass me when they walked by me. That's how I know. So that means that they were spaced apart like they're supposed to be. Unbelievable. I, I got to believe that the vast majority of business owners, whether it's tours or stores or restaurants, they want to comply. They want to keep their employees safe. They want to keep their guests safe. I, I got to believe that vast majority of them are. And, um, mm -hmm. but you know, there's those that, that aren't, and they believe that they, you know, they're going to do what they got to do to, to bring the revenue in. <clears throat> and I, and I think, those are the ones that, that create a problem for everybody else. So, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of companies. And you see it when you go to, uh, even today, UPS. I had to go to the UPS store. And mm -hmm. someone walked in. I was outside. They have little spots, sticker spots outside to keep everybody six feet apart. And they have a limit to how many people can go inside. And someone just bypassed the line. I guess he didn't realize there was a line. And he walked right in. And that guy came right out. Sir, sorry, you have to wait outside. So I think most businesses are going to do what they need to do to, to be safe for everybody. And kudos to those people. It's those that don't give a damn, that you know, uh, don't have the respect for the local people, the residents here, uh, or even their employees, and they're willing to take those risks for that little extra buck. Those are the ones that create the problem. But I gotta believe that's a very small percentage. Um, I like to think that anyway, I really do. And, you know, I said this before, no, you know, we got a lot of experts that I respect. I don't know them personally. I read, I listen to them. You try to learn. And sometimes you wonder because I know what they're saying. And I can see why people who reside in Hawaii are now taking a lot of things with a grain of salt. Because what these experts have saying never hit Hawaii the way it was mentioned, okay? And nobody knows why, whether it's because we're surrounded by water or whatever. And so everyone thinks, you know, these guys, it's, it's almost like uh, the false missile alert, right? You keep on doing that enough time when the real deal happens. It's gonna be too late. You're not gonna be in shelter. A bomb gonna drop on you, too late. Eh, you'll be dead anyway. So you know what? That's the, you know, it's, it's the, the boy that cried wolf. I don't think these experts are doing that on purpose. 
Okay, it's just that we've been very, very fortunate in Hawaii. But what do you do as those um, fortunate times takes a drastic turn on you? What do you do? What can you do? There's not much, man. Not much you can do. You know, it's it's really it, it's the whole idea is to prevent the virus. That that's what that's what contact tracing was all about in the beginning was isolating the virus so you prevent further infection. And that, that goes without saying, you want to prevent this vi uh, virus from spreading. You want to prevent it and you prevent it by practicing the safe measures. And um, some people feel that it's a hoax. Some people feel that it's, it's not necessary. But the idea is to prevent mm -hmm. and then not, not have to fix afterwards. And, uh, and that's the message I think that really got to be put out is the fact that and I, you know, I understand the nice posters and the commercials and about wearing your mask and all of that, but how do you get that out to everybody? How do you get that out to everybody and, and with, the, with the importance when you're, when the other side of your mouth is telling everybody, no worry, you get vaccinated, you're all good. We're opening up, we're going tier four in Oahu, we're gonna be wide open pretty soon. So you, you, you get that subliminal message that it's not as bad as others are making it. So you tend to let your guard down. Uh, while we could have maintained the same activities with a tougher message to keep make people understand that it, this is not minimized. Well, it is you, you know, see, Hawaii, I, I, I've come to realize in the 62 years that I've been on this earth, right? Seeing is believing. Yeah. And you know how you can tell? Okay. Right around when there's a tsunami coming or something is coming, what happens first? What is the biggest indicator? Okay, without the without the, the incident that we're supposed to be guarding against actually taking place, what happens? They run out of toilet paper. Yep. Right? Yeah. That's how you know. Okay. So I'm thinking to myself, man, folks, you can go to the ends of the earth. Stand in line for toilet paper. But for where one damn mask, you don't can even do that. Yep. I'm like, oh boy. How, how does this work? How does this work? Well, we got a few minutes left, Charlie. April 5th. What's your thoughts on April 5th? Or possibly April 1st. But April 5th is the day right now that it's set safe travels here on Kauai, um, entering back. Mm -hmm. what's, well, your, what's your initial thoughts? I, I, I will give you my cognitive thoughts because I am going to deal with it in the now. I could choose to deal with it later in the however you want to deal with it, like most people react in a crazy house. I'm going to deal with it in the now. Personally, I care and I don't care. Again, and the reason why I say that is I am very, very cautious with my lovely wife and I. We hardly leave, you know, unless, unless I have to go to get provisions. I'm just as bad as when it was when the pandemic first hit. I can, I can tell you, I can prove to you how bad. I get on gas guard, I get on Armada, okay? I get on V8, you've wrote it before. You get all the bells and whistles, but that baby sucked gas, okay? How I know, I fill it up once every two weeks. That's how I know, yeah. That's how I know I hardly go in any place. Before when I was playing music, going to Lihui, playing at Troy's, uh, doing what I gotta do, went up to Mahalo Hospital, all of that. I'll be filling up twice a week. Now I fill up only one time, one every two weeks. Sometimes I don't fill up for three weeks. So that tells me that hey, I'm pretty disciplined when it comes to staying away from things. So that's why my response, I care 
but yet it comes across as if I don't care because I'm not in my position because I'm not in a position to make the call. The mayor is, and that's what you're referring to April 5th. He makes a call, he wants to opt back in. I'm surprised. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I am surprised. Um, I am surprised that he even wanted sooner. I mean, if you saw the article, if he could have it April 1st, he would rather have it April 1st, lifting the restriction. There's a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's, there's motive. I, I don't know what it is. It could be. Uh, I know our mayor has, has been out of a lot of pressure and it could be more pressure was added and it was just, wasn't worth it. And I, I, I think based on what we've been saying, I, I think the people of Kauai, we know how to take care of ourselves probably better than anybody else in any of the other islands because why we've gone through it already. We've gone through it. It's not for the floods, it's for hurricane, not for the hurricane, it's for this damn pandemic. So I'm not worried at all. But right now, I personally think it's, it's a call I wouldn't have made, not like that. And you know, the sad thing about it too, Mel, but you're right, we're gonna keep the course. We started this, giving the information out, right? Mm -hmm. I got some messages saying, hey, man, your, your man sounds different. I know you supported him, but what happened? And my only response is, he is the mayor. He makes the decision. I cannot answer for him. But I know what they I, I know what they were saying. But that's all I could respond with. I couldn't respond any other way. Yeah, I, I think I feel the same way. I, I think um, the CDC's recommendations haven't changed as far as travel. The, the CDC's <laughs> recommendations have not traveled, uh, have not changed. Their recommendation is not to travel. Their recommendation, unless you have to, do not travel. That, that's what they say. They say, if you travel, that you should get a second test, you should quarantine, you should do certain things. That hasn't changed. Right. They're easing up on some of the, you know, now they're saying, well, if you're, your little group are vaccinated, then you don't have to wear a mask. Okay, that has absolutely nothing to do with travel. So that, that's apples and oranges. We're talking about the, the travel and the fact that a decision was made on Kauai. Now, granted, I, it was, it was a just a matter of time before the mayor had to open up because the numbers don't justify staying closed. The, the problem I have is that the numbers that we see on Kauai, we know for a fact they're accurate. Now, we don't know. I don't have any confidence in the numbers that the state puts out which means once you open up the travel, uh, we're gonna have a lot of inner island travel. We're gonna have a lot, of, I don't know how much more direct mainland travel, but we all know one thing that one test system uh, doesn't work. So it'll be interesting to see the Maui study and the UH study on travel uh, related transmission of the virus. I, I can only, if it, it gotta be, it's gonna be telling, I think. I don't know, I haven't seen it. But we know that the vast majority of the cases on Kauai, and I don't care what the Lieutenant Governor says, he's, he's wrong, that our vast majority of our positive cases on Kauai after safe travels came from travel, period. End of story, no dispute. So it's, it's yet to be seen. What happens, Charlie? We're gonna find out on Kauai. The only good thing about opening up on Kauai, knowing the way we count cases, Knowing the way we, uh, the transparency that our mayor and his, his team has provided for us, we will know soon if in fact, this is going to cause a problem. We will find out within the first two, three weeks, if in fact, this safe travels program is truly safe with the vaccines and with everything else. So I'm, I'm confident that the way we handle the positives and the way we report here on Kauai is accurate. So. It's a good thing, uh, again, trying to be positive. I, like you, I'm surprised that we, we changed course, but it is what it is. We, we are going to have an opportunity now to basically test the system with accurate counting, uh, case counting and reporting. So we will be able to see firsthand if in fact, this 
program, which they call the safe travel, which I call the unsafe travel program works. And you know, Charlie, I don't have a problem. A month from now, two months from now, cases remain zero, one. I'd be the first to come up here in front of this camera and say, guys, I was wrong. I was wrong, you know, I, I, I based my position on what I heard from experts around the world, but I was wrong. I had no problem with that. And I hope, I hope that I get to do that one day. I really do. But that again, that's yet to, to be seen. And we will see how this thing pans out. Well, you know, the, the only thing I'm disappointed at, okay, because it seems as if the word quarantine put a, put a block and, and, and it, was, it, it, was, it was a standoff. It was a standoff between the hotel industry saying, you don't remove the quarantine, we ain't opening back up. I get it, I get it. But you know what? We could have removed the quarantine. We shouldn't have removed the testing. And I hope and pray those hotels that uh, really gave a no-win situation. I hope they're true to their word that they will conduct testing at their properties. I hope they do that. Yeah. And I hope, I hope they have big enough manhoods that if they catch people that are sick, they say something so we all can protect ourselves and do what is right. I hope they do that. I just wish they didn't they didn't take away the testing, that's all. Yeah. I just I again I'm I Charlie, you are with your lovely wife on vacation. You come to Kauai and you have a seven day vacation. Mm -hmm. And you took your test in the mainland and you come here and now they say, Hey, Charles, how about taking a COVID test? really want to keep our community safe. Take a COVID test. Well, what happened if I test positive? Well, then you're going to be quarantined for 14 days. Oh, I can't, I got to go back home. I got to go back work. Sorry, you're not going to be able to fly until we clear you. How many people are going to take that test, Charlie? How many normal one week passenger uh, visitors going to take a test knowing that if they take, and it could be a false positive. You're stuck in Kauai for 14 more days at your expense. How many people are going to take that test? But you see, brother, you, you know, you know when, when those kind of thoughts come into play, then it, we come right back down. You're going to open up, no need to take tests. That's why we are where we are now. It's, it's, when those kind of, it's when those kind of thoughts are put up on the table. And I think it's this. What are we trying to do? Are we are we testing just to say, hey, we got a pretty damn good testing system? Are we trying to do that? No, we're not. We are just trying to say we know how to keep the people safe. And for those monkeys out there that think, oh no, that we got nothing to be safe about. We're safe already. We are. Then why did we just have, you know, uh, two cases reported? Why? It didn't have to. We could have remained at zero all the way through. It didn't happen. We got two more cases. That's what I'm saying. The thing is, it's, it's almost as if we're negotiating against ourselves. And you know what? It sucked. It sucked. And I wish there was a way to say, hey, okay, you know, if I got to negotiate against you, I do away with the quarantine. I don't want to do it with the test. Why can't you understand that? You want me to do it with the test? Okay, then bring back the quarantine. Then you don't need tests. See, so either way, you know, either way, but these guys, they want the entire ball of wax. They don't want quarantine and they don't want testing. So then that's why I posed the question earlier. Then tell me, please, for those scholars out there, how are we supposed to detect when somebody is sick? We wait until they show the signs and symptoms. Is that how it is? Because a lot of them came and gone. And then you wonder why, hey, how come the virus stay back here? And it's not travel related. That's the reason why it came and gone, was deposited, okay? It's like how we like to go to Vegas to deposit, come back with nothing. People are thinking the same way, hey, let's go to Kauai. There are over there, they hardly get any infections. We go there, if we deposit, hey, 
we're going to be staying there a little while. We'll, we'll leave. But they're going to leave all the Opala over here. Is that fair to us? That's, that's all I'm saying. Just leave the test for us and it's, you know, you can test the person. Yes, sir. Well, now one last question. Why only hold hotels, resorts to their words? We should be holding every business in all industries that is open to their word of upholding and enforcing any mass mandate or pandemic policy. Absolutely, no disagreement there. In fact, you, we've heard the stories of the local business in Honolulu getting shut down because they never comply. Um, <clears throat> and I think that that's what I, what I was saying earlier that you know, I think the vast majority of businesses, I believe, are complying and are enforcing, um, but there is that minority number of businesses, whether they're hotels or not is irrelevant, that aren't. And the ones that aren't, whether they're a hotel, a restaurant, a supermarket, they should be held accountable. I agree, 100%. Everybody. Anyway, Charles, yes. any closing thoughts? No, it's, it's you know, again, it's, it's good to, to breathe some new life into opening up. I mean, that's what everybody wants. That's, and, and uh, you know, like they say, you know, you, you can never stop progress. Something like this, you want that. You want to get to a point where you can open up. But we saw how devastating it is. And, you know, I'm going to be the first one to admit. And, you know, I'm going to apologize to everybody right now if I start crying. But I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to tell you the reason why I feel the way I feel. I just wish my brother had a fighting chance. With all the rhetoric that's been going on, the talk that's been going on, if my brother was alive today, he would have had a fighting chance because he would not have what, to, what, what would have he done. But he didn't. And so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm skittish. I'm skittish to think he laid his head down on that damn hospital gurney, okay? He was still up and awake. But guess what happened? That slowly diminished over time. Did he recognize any one of us when he left this earth? I'll never know that answer until the day I leave this earth and hopefully I'll find him. Those kind of things is what really gets under my skin right now and why I am the way I am. And maybe, you know, to be honest with you, Mel, maybe I'm not the right person for being in this position right now since we're going to be opening up because I, I, I harbor these kind of feelings. Maybe I'm not the right guy. Maybe we got to find somebody that can be even killed. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer, brother. It's just I want everybody to know that that's why I feel the way I do. I try not to be negative. I try to be positive all the time. But I see certain comments, and I know certain comments, like you said, are directed to us. And so, you know, I like to let those people know, how the hell am I supposed to act now? You tell me. You cannot act like me because you was never in my shoes. But how am I supposed to act? I wish I can act normal sometimes. You know, if I didn't care enough for all of you out there, then maybe life would be simpler. But I see how fast this virus can take somebody. I saw it with my own damn eyes. And we hear that story over and over again. We need to open up, yes. We've never said don't open up, but we've always said, but we need to open up safely. And that's the whole, and that's a God's honest truth. We gotta do it safely. And maybe that's why I feel the need to come on and just keep on pounding the drums, hoping that everybody understands that that's all we're talking about now. It's just doing it safely. And I hope and pray you folks follow that lead. Anything else, you folks decide what you gotta, you gotta do. Thank you, Thank sir. You. No, and 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 no, you are the right person for this because you, you bring that that part of reality. Because plenty of people can talk, Charlie. Plenty of people can talk. Over five hundred thousand people lost their lives and their families all been on that journey like yourself. You know, just some people. They, they, I, they I'm surprised with the Hawaii people that forget about what we are so known for. But it is what it is, Charlie. I understand everybody has different challenges and, and um, 
and it can be done safely. That, that's what pisses me off. It can be done safely. And we just, we just take shortcuts and we take shortcuts, people get hurt. So, yeah, no, I, I think, I think we, uh, we kind of lost touch with, you know, I go back to the analogy of the, the war veterans that died after when we first went to, to war in, in the Middle East and every time a soldier died, the country came to a halt. And then after enough of them died, it was just done. You just put a number up. It, it no longer means anything. And that's kind of what happened with COVID. You know, now it's just uh, two more died today, oh, four more died today. And uh, we kind of lost that connection. The fact that every death is a, a person and a family and friends and, and, uh, and, and we, we play around with this thing. Like, you know, yeah, we know we're gonna lose some people, tough shit. That's just how this thing works. Because it's more important to get our visitors here. And, you know, I'm gonna tell you something and this is gonna offend a shitload of people. And I'm sorry again, but Charlie, you touched the nerve. If any of you think that this governor, this Lieutenant governor is doing what they're doing and opening up the visitor industry to bring back jobs. You're sorely mistaken people. It's revenue. Revenue to the state is what they're fighting for. Not jobs. Because if they were so concerned about jobs and livelihoods, they would just be writing the check. They would have fixed the unemployment a long time ago. No, they don't give a damn about the jobs that the 30% occupancy gonna bring back to your hotel. They don't care about that. They care about the TAT revenue, the sales tax revenue coming into the state. That's what they're, and they've said it admittedly. I ain't making this up. They could care less. I'm telling you. I've been in that game long enough to know. They care about revenue. They don't care about, they know for a fact, opening up safe, we saw it, safe travels, 30% occupancy. Maybe you get up to 32%, you're lucky. It's not your workforce back to work. They know that because they've seen it on Oahu. They've seen it in Maui and they saw it on a big island. It's not about jobs. It's about money. It's about revenue. It's about taking care of the CEOs and executives from the damn hotel industry and the visitor industry, the airline industry. So I know many of you will disagree and I respectfully disagree, but I'm telling you, I've watched this from day one. I've watched the, I've watched the, I've watched the interviews. I've watched their interviews with their uh, side interviews with the industry. I've watched interviews that the industry came on TV it has absolutely nothing to do about jobs. It has everything to do about tax revenue. So anyway, Charlie, I'm sorry I had to end that way, but um, it is what it is. Wednesday night, we'll be back. Uh, I'm trying to get a very, I'm not even gonna mention it because I haven't got a response yet, but we're trying to bring on a, a survivor that's going through some tough times right now, still suffering symptoms one year later. Um, never been on a show before. Um, hope we can get some confirmation, but we'll be back Wednesday night, people, with a damn good show. Mm -hmm. Charlie, we love you, man. We appreciate you staying love on. You. And no, you, you cannot, you cannot leave. You see, I don't think you understand. This is. I like know. I, I know. I know why. I know why you like me stay. You want to at least have that concert that you promised everybody that I go to throw. Damn right. Damn right. See, this is <laughs> like the mafia, Charlie. You cannot. You don't dictate when you leave. It's all of our viewers. All of our viewers. <laughs> you got it. You all got right, it. my man. I well, love you, man. Love you guys all. Take yeah, care. Too. God bless. We'll see you guys Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Aloha. <laughs>